G'day everyone and thank you for picking to watch my video of my home uh, setup of a grid tire solar system or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm just going to jump up on the roof right now first of all and show you my solar panels that I've assembled and connected up, mounted on the roof. So it just gives a second while I jump up there. Oh yeah. Righto everyone, so I've got four solar panels all connected up and mounted on the roof here in parallel. 12 volt setup. And wired it all up. Laid out the conduit as well for the cables to run through. up here. Uh, there's four panels all rated at 35 watts each so that's uh, somewhere around 500 watts. Uh, and they're big. That's the panels. Jump down on the roof now and I'll show you where they're connected. Okay, everybody, so this is where all the business happens. That's the conduit coming down off of the roof from the solar panels. Comes down the wall there, runs over here, and uh, just sort of finishes there. <clears throat> this, this, is, um, this is pretty thick double insulated wire, so I wasn't too concerned about um, having it exposed like that. There's not really any kind of danger, so anyway, up wire travels along down here, along the back of this wooden box, and then into uh, up along the side here, and into uh, here, so this, that, that's the same wire that comes down. Oh, Jesus! And it curls around behind here up into this uh, little box here, which is the solar charge controller. So, I'd say uh, it's a 30 amp solar charge controller, 12 or 24 volt automatic detection, and uh. So yeah, anyway, the, the uh, panels are connected directly into here, and uh, from there, from there the battery is connected here. So the battery comes out of here, and it just comes down along here under under here, and into a fuse. So it's fused on the positive side with a 50 amp uh, automatic reset circuit breaker. So that's for any overload if, if uh, you know anything goes crazy wrong and it overloads that that'll protect the solar controller from melting down and then it's connected onto this battery here. Ooh. So anyway, this uh, projected solar controller is this projected solar controller here. When I bought it, it also comes with this um, display panel. You can buy it. You can buy it by itself without the panel, or you can you can also buy it with the display panel. So I recommend buying it with the display panel because it gives you a lot more functionality of the system. It gives you the ability to set uh, battery charge parameters and device parameters and uh, solar panel parameters and stuff like that. So anyway, as you can see, as soon as you press the buttons there, it gives you the ability to see straight away the, uh, the voltage input from your solar panels, the current input from your solar panels, and also it gives you an indication of if the system is charging the battery at the present time. It gives you the, uh, it also gives you the, the current voltage input going into the batteries. So, this is your input coming off the panels, and then this is what's being charged into batteries. Also, along with how much current is being charged into your batteries. Also, it lists uh, here 
your load uh, because this uh, solar controller you can plug your load directly into the solar controller here and uh, you can run a DC load straight out of the solar controller but I'm not using that function because I'm using pretty big inverters which need to pull a large a current straight off the batteries themselves so I'm not using that function but anyway as you scroll through the Hey, what's this? Come in. Mm, anyway. <clears throat> As you scroll through the panels, uh, through the, the screens there, yeah, it gives you your date. It gives you your charge energy. And it measures it in day and month and total. So this day alone, I've produced 3.07 kilowatt hours of electricity which is like 3,070 watt hours of electricity in, uh, in a 24 hour day. So that's well and truly enough power to uh, run a few big appliances within the house. And it gives you your current battery voltage and the current being charged into it. And also it lists the state of charge. So it's at 48% state of charge at the moment and that's because I've been running a few things off of it doing trial and error. And then here is the probably the, the more important one is your PV uh, measurements. So it gives, gives you your voltage coming in off the panels, your current coming in off the panels and then it shows you exactly how many watts you're producing. So it's after 6 o'clock at the moment. Six so yeah, after 6 o'clock at the moment, so I'm not making very much power right now. But anyway, it gives you controller temperature. The actual temperature of the controller itself. So it gives you the ability to monitor, and monitor what it's running at. Your load, which is not very useful to me. And then we're back to the start. Then it's got some other things, it's got some other windows here, you can scroll through and pick other menus to go in and view. Uh, so another menu which is pretty useful here is the control parameters. And it gives you the ability to um, select your type of battery from sealed, uh, AGM, gel or flooded batteries. So you can pick that there and it's got it, when you pick that it runs off a whole uh, bunch of preset parameters. <laughs> it uh, also allows you to set your battery capacity in amp hours. So I've got five N120 truck batteries which add up to a total of 600 amp hours. So I've set that in there and it helps the uh, charger to more accurately charge your batteries. Oh, Temperature compensation which is pretty useless if you ask me. Over voltage discharge and charge limit. It gives you the ability to set a whole bunch of parameters manually um, so you control exactly what voltage your batteries charge at and what voltage they disconnect and reconnect and all that kind of stuff. So it gives you the ability to set your, your charging periods, how long you want it to equalise, how long you want it to boost, so on. And yeah, you get a couple other windows there. You can set your load parameters so you can you can control exactly when this turns on and what voltages it turns on and off at and so on. Get charge mode so you can pick whether you want to charge it uh, dependent on the, the state of charge percentage or, or your voltage percentage. So you're probably better off running it on voltage percentage or your voltage reading so that it can charge the battery more accurately compared, uh, depending on your voltage. Anyway, so we come down here, the solar controller, anyway, like I said, the, the battery is connected in here, solar controller comes down and it connects onto there, and uh, 
and then I've got five batteries, the five uh, truck batteries all connected up in 12 volt parallel. What is that? That's just a packet of chips that I was eating. <coughs> oh, anyway, so yeah, these are all second hand batteries which I picked up off of old, um, out of uh, truck yards that people didn't want anymore and I just took a bit of a bet, you know, a bit of a gamble. Um, and couple cartons of beer it cost me four or five of them and they all recharged up really nice and good so and then there's the inverters so there's two projected 2000 watt power inverters so there's a fair bit of power running here as you can see this one on the left hand side hasn't been connected up yet because I'm still doing a bit of trial and error to see what I can do with them but uh, anyway the uh, inverters themselves. Pull that one. The inverters themselves, one connects over here, the one that is connected uh, connects here. So you got the ground and then supply. Supply is fused up with a huge 250 amp fuse. Uh, fuse. Um, it's got to be uh, high enough so that. It can handle the huge amount of currents that's going to be flowing through those cables at uh, at uh, 4,000 watts at 4,000 watts 240 volt that's going to pull around about 240 amps DC current so there's a lot of current flowing through those cables so anyway they're just connected up and that runs down straight up into the back of the inverter tighten down with nuts there's your two plugs 240 volt AC outlet on off switch power light and fault light so that you can see if anything's gone wrong with it and uh, yeah it's just the same thing on the other side with this one <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So yeah, that's it everybody, thanks for watching my video to check out my uh, solar panel setup, if you have any questions just post your comments, if you want any help with every, anything yeah just let us know and thumbs up the video, thanks everybody, I'm gonna say bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>